Okay, Dad, today is Friday, August 2nd, and I had trouble sleeping last night, actually. I woke up at like 3.30, 4 in the morning, and just thinking like, my God, we might be headed for an all-out war. Um, oh. You know, we've been talking about this possibility for a while, and then it just started to get really real for me all of a sudden. Yeah. I was listening to Alexander Mercurius, and he was kind of explaining that he also thinks that this is really all hell can break out. And do you think that's that where we're headed the, right now? Well, Iran that, that has seems, right. That seems to be the consensus. Um, we're getting close. This is, you know, it's like I've said that Netanyahu has been has been trying to make this war happen for years, if actually decades. Um, he got awfully close, you know, a few months ago with his attack on the consulate building, latest attempt, and I think we're probably even closer still. Something. The, the the Iranians have said they are going to retaliate. I mean, they, in fact, informed the Security Council that they were, that under international law, you know, they were going to retaliate as they have a right to do. Um, so there's no question that they will. It's just the only question is how big it is and will it be enough to set off a regional war. So we'll see. Well, it does. I, I feel like we're entering a new phase where it's not just a tit for tat type of retaliation, because what I have heard is that Iran is using the language that they're going to and uh, start a special military operation using the same terminology that Russia did when it started its uh, invasion into Ukraine. Um, and this this means that we are no longer just a one and done scenario, at least in my mind. If you're engaging in some type of special military operation, it means like, no, this is something we're building for the long haul, that this is no longer, we're at a new well, phase. Uh, the, the word special military operation, I think that actually the reason that Putin chose that was that he, he was trying to make it clear that this was not an invasion. His intent was to, to bring a, about a diplomatic solution. And he nearly pulled it off, right? Um, right, but so so it's same, a limited, same. right? It's a limited operation, but it is a military operation. I, I, so what I hear, when, you know, when they use that term, is that this is not a demonstration, which is what we did last time. A demonstration exactly. of what we're going to this time. We are going to do some damage to some of your military assets. I think that's what it means. Right. So I, I think that this isn't going to be like what we saw when Iran sent over hundreds of drones um, and terrified people in Israel and struck a few military targets, but didn't kill any civilians um, or, or anybody in that right, attack. Right, exactly. and right. And gave ample they, they, warnings they, they, to they, the they, U.S. what they were going to do. Right, they gave ample... Right, it sounds like what we're happening here, I, do you think that there's going to be, there's a lot of backdoor communication currently right now with Iran and the United States to coordinate something similar like what we saw before, or if we're saying that no, this is a military operation, right? If it we're is a going military, to be secretive if, about how we're going yeah, to carry it right. out. If indeed it is a military operation, I don't, uh, you know, I don't think we're going to get the same kind of communication. You know, that was actually right. to notify the U.S. and through the U.S. Israel that this is not a military operation, right? We are not intending to cause serious damage to a military base or a military facility or whatever. You know, th this is a demonstration. That's all it is. But if it is military operation, you don't um, telegraph what you're going to do ahead of time, right? It has to be a surprise. Right. So we're going to hit this base. Well, then, you know, you can concentrate your your air defense assets right there and prevent, you know, protect that particular target. So I think that we're not getting the same kind of communication this time. Right. There, there has to be a flurry of diplomatic uh, activity going on behind the scenes, right? I mean, there's so many people are getting in, are going to be involved in this when this when this gets escalates. I mean, we're talking about right. how will countries like Saudi Arabia or the UAE, uh, Egypt, Jordan, you know, Lebanon, Syria, Turkey, all these countries in the region, Iraq, what, what, what's going to happen? What, what do you think? Will we see Jordanian airspace still being used to stop Iranian uh, missiles? What will we see happen in Iraq? I, I know you, you don't have a crystal ball, but <laughs> I don't know. What, 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 yeah. what, what do you ex what do you think is happening right now in, in, right. in these well, other Middle anything, Eastern countries? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, uh, that over time, as this horrible, you know, Gaza war uh, progresses, the the hostility against Israel 
and the support for Hamas, especially following the assassination of their political leader, Hania, recently, that that support is only going to increase. That's, that hostility towards Israel is, has been continually increasing. So if anything, I, you know, I can't, I don't know if, if there's going to be a change in policy, but the pressures for a change in policy in support of Iran and its actions must only be increasing. And maybe we'll see some, you know, countries that maybe, for example, Jordan, I don't know, but Jordan maybe last time went along with the uh, U.S. air defense effort and it helped Israel uh, to help to protect their their bases. But this time they might not. They might not. And they might. Do you but, see but the any, pressure has got to be there. Do you see anything that could de-escalate this situation now or is have we gone over the precipice? Well, I don't know if we've gone, we're actually plunging into the abyss, but I don't think there's any question that Iran is going to retaliate. They've gone out and they said it, they've made it an official pronouncement, and now I don't think they can back away from that. It's just a question of how how big a strike this will be and what Israel's response will be. And then, you know, last time, okay, it began to escalate and then rapidly de-escalated. This time, we might not be so lucky. I just saw... Lindsey Graham was putting forward some legislation to say that if Iran or Hezbollah attack Israel, that the U.S. will attack Iran. I, I didn't read the full details. I just saw the headline right before. Um, I, I don't know how I don't know that process. But do you think that if this happens, what will the U.S. do? The, well, they've the, already made the it. U.S. is. Uh, yeah, they made it clear that they, they're they going to support me. Right. They, they, they're going to support Israel now to what right. extent. You know, well, clearly, like last time, I think they'll they'll obviously be involved in air defense. Actually, you know, again, most of the the missiles and drones that were shot down were shot down by U.S. and um, other Western aircraft, not actually by by Israel's land based air defense systems. And I think we probably will see the more of the same. But we don't know. You know, if if um, if Iran goes straight to hypersonic missiles. The U.S. might not even have time to respond. You know, they may not be able to get their aircraft up there to shoot them, and they and they and I don't think they would. Could be we able even to shoot, shoot a hypersonic anyway. missile? Right. No, probably right, not. Right. right. Um, so that would be a whole different kettle of fish there.